David Regal with another question. What was the creative thinking process, already giving me the benefit of the doubt, for the Carbonaro effect? Was it all scripted when you started? Were things invented on the spot? That kind of a thing. Well, the Carbonaro effect grew out of a uh, character that Michael Carbonaro performed on The Tonight Show that got sold as a series. And so that concept in the, in the, in the bits in The Tonight Show, he was a clerk portrayed uh, the role of a clerk in a store and magical things would happen. A product, say, would have a unique attribute and we'd know with a wink to the camera that magic was being performed, but the hapless customer would think it truly was a product with a unique attribute. So if you think about it, it's an interesting scenario. And this scenario existed before my involvement. Uh, there is no magic trick, if you think about it. I mean, there is. But for that person, that customer, there is no magic. This is real life. Uh, similarly, there is no magician. I mean, Michael Carbonaro is a magician, and the viewers know that, but in the context of the bit, there is no magician. There's a clerk or a storekeeper or what have you. Well, that idea got expanded into the series, and we did over 100 episodes, and it got expanded in every way. Sometimes we did larger pieces, not sometimes, once an episode. We did a larger piece with a big, bigger a physical scope, and the rest of the show was populated by these smaller bits that would take place wherever uh, we could secure a location. It wasn't always just you know a shopkeeper. Sometimes he was a coworker. Other times he might be your employer or you know the Marks employer. And so as for uh, how scripted was it? Well, we can't script the Mark. The Mark is what we call the 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 person wandering into our world of <laughs> world of wonder. We can't script them, but we can write to that mark as if that mark is an actor. They don't know they're an actor. They don't know they're on TV. They think they're just shopping or showing up for work. But uh, in pre-production of this show, not only was everything you know written out as an idea, they actually had to get approved by network and the production company. Uh, the pieces had to be written with the mark in mind. What is the mark going to believe is happening? So we'd get a lot of interesting pitches from magicians, and sometimes it was very much like a trick. Here's the trick that happens. But for the Carbonaro effect, which truly is not a magic show, it's, it's a strange day in the life of the mark. What we needed in addition to the magic component was what is the mark going to believe is happening? And that's why the show could go, you know, uh, 100 episodes, over 800 bits probably. And uh, the reason is it wasn't like a magic catalog where here's fire tricks, <laughs> here's liquid tricks, and you just run through everything. Now let's do rope tricks, uh, although no card tricks. Uh, that would have limitations. You'd, you'd reach the back page of the catalog. But if you approach the show from what is someone believing is happening, it is infinite. It's truly infinite because then you're really using magic as a tool to accomplish a, a very different task. Let's make the mark believe that X does Y. And once you get into that world, uh, it's just limited by your imagination.